When hiking in the rainforest of Ecuador, you see some incredible things. Whether it be a giant leaf, Look at that. a hummingbird, or an amazing view. But nothing prepared me for this little guy. <laughs> yeah, this thing is probably the best looking beetle in the world. It's small, so I'm gonna put it in a vial and then take up my macro lens later and we'll get some better shots. But don't worry, I'll let him go. But for now, ah, I love this. Okay, now we are back at base camp and we have our beautifully shiny beetle. I want to show you how to get a photo that looks like this. So first of all, the gear I use. I'm gonna be shooting with the 100 millimeter macro and what's great about this is you can set it on the 0.3 to 0.5 meters so that means that its focus range is going to be really narrow making it easier for the autofocus to work and with that i use this diffuse flash i have a speed light here oh look at that beetle Whoa. that is beautiful look at those antennae okay we're gonna have one more beetle to shoot that's official i'm gonna stick it in my pocket for now. 100 millimeter macro, the 0.3 meter to 0.5 meter makes the autofocus work great. We've got this connector to the flash here, a speed light, a diffuser. This diffuser is super, super important because it makes a really nice even light and especially on shiny things like insects, it's really easy for a small flash to show up as a very harsh spot. So with this, it makes a really nice glowing light and you can see the difference in these photos right here. Now the other lens I love to use is the MPE 65 millimeter macro. Now this thing is like a telescope on a camera. There's no autofocus. So to focus it, you entirely have to just move forward and back. It, I feel like it's like a sniper rifle for tiny insects. It's pretty intense. So you can see it's got the 1X here, but you could zoom it all the way out to 5X, which basically makes an ant fill the entire frame incredibly difficult to use and the photos don't look super great at this zoom so I try to stay between 3x and 2x to do most things um, and with that one I tend not to use the diffuse flash because you have to get so close to it I use this here twin flash so basically you could stick it on the end of the lens and get really nice and close and completely surround the thing with light so to get that white background that is why I have this. So normally when I travel to the tropics, I bring a piece of white acrylic, probably a quarter inch, opaque, a little bit glossy is okay, but it's really important to have something very, very smooth. Otherwise, when you're that tight on the macro, you can actually see the pattern of the thing that you're shooting on. So you want to avoid that. You want it to be white. I got this piece of foam. I was trying it out on this trip and so far you can see it's not ideal because if I'm trying to shoot something that is crawling and it goes over one of those cracks, it's not going to be so good. But I've still been able to get a couple shots. So I'm going to show you how it works. And the idea here is you cover this with so much flash that it just blankets the bottom and reflects up under the insect too. And it just gives a really nice bold insect right in the middle of white that you can do a lot of cool things with in editing. So let's get to work. First victim, the weevil. Okay, so when it comes to settings, this is pretty much where it stays the entire time I'm shooting these guys. Aperture at 11, ISO at around 250, 200, and my shutter speed at 250. I generally keep it there whether I'm shooting here or I'm shooting out at night in the darkness it just seems to work really well with this kind of lens and this kind of flash but feel free to experiment a little bit but i recommend starting here and then moving on all right so i'm going to test out the flash levels right now i have it at 132 and 132 so let's get our first beetle up here now when you have little vials like this they're okay in there you can even put a little drop of water or something but they could stay probably up to 24 hours with no real big issue of course I always like to release them afterwards so a good way to get them to be nice and calm you can put them in something dark helps too but what I like to do is just give a little tip and let them sit there so now I know exactly where it's gonna be and I get my flash ready so what I'm doing here is I'm actually setting my flash down next to me 
and I'm going to see how this looks with it just kind of doing its thing on the side. Getting some dirt on there. Let me clean you up. Okay, we can always cut that. Pretty good. Let's go again. So I'm trying to have it face the flash and I put the focus side on the left side so I can get its eye in focus. When you're shooting insects, you almost always want that eye in focus. It's really important. Get ready, pal. You're gonna behave. So another technique you can use to make a uncooperative beetle cooperate is you can actually stick it on its back and what ends up happening is they just kind of pause for a second you can get your focus wait for it to flip over come on pal once he flips get the shot all right so that is the 100 millimeter macro now i'm going to swap over to the mpe 65 millimeter which is like the most intense lens Ever. for the reasons I was saying because there's no autofocus you have incredibly narrow depth of field and it's just really hard to see into especially at night you absolutely need another light lighting up your subject otherwise you'll just never be able to focus here by day it should be a bit easier so let's give it a shot I'm gonna swap out this which was connected to my other flash and I'm gonna put on this guy here nice and tight here. Excellent. So this again I'm going to start at about 132 or 116 and kind of see where it goes from there. So the key with this is just to practice a lot knowing where if I want to look right at this dot how to do that. Like this it's it's a really a practice game with this lens because you have to know how to look through this thing because you will literally get lost on the surface of this white and not be able to find your subject so i recommend practicing on something slow something completely still just getting used to that process of seeing what you want to look at and then coming through here and being able to know the right distance and the right angle all right i think we got it Cool. So as you can tell, that is a very good looking weevil. So in summary, you need a good solid white surface. I'm probably gonna stick with acrylic and not this foam in the future, and you need a really good wide diffuse flash. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Phil Torres on The Jungle Diaries, and this is the coolest weevil ever. So let's say goodbye to him. Flip over, you got it. Bye, pal. All right, let's let him go. Best looking beetle ever? Yeah. Now obviously there are plenty of details I wasn't able to go into in this video, especially when it comes to editing and bringing out that white. Save that for a future video and get out trying to see what you can do. Now as for that beetle that was in my pocket, I got some photos of it. It climbed up on my camera gear and flew away. I first learned a lot of these techniques from my friends over at Tropical Herping. They're a professional herpetologist in Ecuador, and as you can see here, they have a two flash setup, a big white board, and if you thought wrangling a beetle was tough, try a lizard or a snake. They're true pros.